Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thank you, John Atwood, Pat, Mike Cortez, and four new patrons over the weekend. Everybody welcome Gabriel, Ahmed, Gary, and Vadarung. Welcome new patrons! On this episode of DTNS, iPhone 18 is out, but iPhones are selling a little slower. Online dating has not made dating easier, and the Federal Reserve Bank could tell us why. And Microsoft adds new co-pilot features to Microsoft 365. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, September 16th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And coming from somewhere around the DMV, your boy, Big Chris Ashley. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Jay. Now, for those who think Chris is waiting to get his driver's license, the DMV in question is not the Department of Motor Vehicles. No, and it's not Delaware either. <laughs> and it's not Delmarva. This is D.C., this is Maryland, and Northern and Virginia. Virginia. Uh, well, folks, uh, we got a lot of good stuff to get to. Let's start with the quick hits. Reuters sources say that back in 2022, Sony picked AMD to design the chips for the PlayStation 6. That would be the PlayStation they're working on, not the one that's out right now. But that Intel was in the bidding. AMD designed the chip for the PS5, so it's not surprising that Sony stuck with AMD. What is interesting here is that Intel got into the final bidding. In response to the Reuters report, Intel issued a statement saying, we strongly disagree with this characterization, because Reuters was spinning it as Intel lost the contract. Uh, it sounds to me like Intel doesn't like Reuters saying they lost the contract, but doesn't deny that they were in the bidding and AMD got it. I think they said stop snitching. Yeah. <laughs> Stitches. <laughs> TikTok U.S. made its arguments in a Washington, D.C. appeals court to Monday that a law requiring ByteDance to sell it or be blocked is a violation of the First Amendment protections. The case will turn on whether the judges believe requiring ByteDance to sell TikToks, TikTok is an abridgment of speech. Courts in the U.S. generally defer to the executive branch on matters of national security. Yeah, the judges were pretty strict on this one. Uh, their, their questions indicated they wanted ByteDance to demonstrate, like, what, what's wrong with this law? Seems like the law was written well. That doesn't always mean they're going to rule against you. It means right. they're really trying to be like, you're not making your case. Make your case better. Right, uh, right. Brain computer interface maker Synchron announced its system allowed a 64-year-old man with ALS to control Amazon's virtual assistant with his thoughts. Didn't have to make any motions, didn't have to speak. He also could use it to control a cell phone, a tablet, and a computer. The integration with the voice assistant lets him do things like turn off lights, turn on the TV, control his doorbell camera, and more. Synchron also connected its system with ChatGPT and with an Apple Vision Pro. Uh, Synchron's BCI is a mesh of electrodes that, this is going to sound a, a little graphic, but they, they get it into your motor cortex by going up through the jugular vein, which sounds horrible, doesn't it? Uh, but it means they don't have to open your skull. So it's actually less invasive than like cracking open your skull and putting it in directly. Synchron is testing its device in six people in the U.S., four people in Australia uh, in early stage studies, but are preparing for a larger trial. Yeah, I always love cool stuff like that, man. Okay, Norway's Road Information Council said that more than 94% of new cars registered in the, in the country last month were EVs. Norwegians pay higher taxes for non-EV cars, and EV drivers often pay lower parking fees and can use bus lanes. The most popular EV in Norway last month was the Tesla Model Y at 19%, followed by the Volvo EX30 and the Czech EV Skoda Enyaq in third. Uh, just a quick note that the AirPod 4 reviews are out as the NDAA lifts, and the reviewers have weighed in on how well open air active noise cancellation works in the new AirPods 4. Turns out they look like they work pretty well. Chris Welch at The Verge says it works surprisingly well. He described it as less dramatic when the audio is not playing. When you turn off the AirPods or when you turn it on with the AirPods Pro, it kind of shuts out the world. It doesn't do that with the AirPods 4 because it doesn't have the seal. But he said when there was audio playing, it really did cut down low frequency noises like ferry engines, city traffic, office hums. Wall Street Journal's Nicole Nguyen agreed, saying that if they stay in your ears, they masked office buzz and train rattles 
battle. Dwayne and CNET's David Carnoy both noted the battery life seems shorter than the AirPods 3. But the active noise cancellation works. That was that was a question I had, too. Right. That, you know, I, I'm not a fan of those AirPods at all. But Well, here's a roundup of several Apple stories on launch day of iOS 18. Uh, we're also getting the new operating system for iPad, Watch, and Mac. Uh, analyst Ming-Chi Kuo combined supply chain data with Apple's ship date estimates on its website to estimate that orders of the iPhone 16 are down 12.7% from the iPhone 15 series launch last year. Now, interestingly, the base models are up. People are ordering more iPhone 16 and 16 Plus. They are not buying the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max in as large a numbers as they bought the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max last year. Uh, also, the United States Federal Drug Administration cleared Apple's sleep apnea detection in the Apple Watch. Last week, we got the approval for the uh, hearing aid uh, provisions. Now we got the sleep apnea detection approval. So if you buy a new Apple Watch, you'll get that later this month. Probably won't take that long for it to, to push out there. Um, before we get to talking about the iOS 18 features, because everybody's all abuzz, they're all getting their new uh, Operating system updates. Uh, what do you think of this news here, Chris? Uh, so for me personally, the sleep apnea uh, approval, I think, is the bee's knees because um, for for quite some time, you know, my wife, I could just listen to my wife sleep next to me and I could tell she was you know, struggling a bit. And I was like, hey, you need to go get a sleep apnea test. Uh, and she just looked at me like I was crazy because nobody wants uh -huh. to hear anything like that. But um, she finally got the test done. And this is the one where they brought the test in-house. And then yeah. she did. Um, and then turned out that she definitely had sleep apnea and that she needed a machine. And it was kind of jarring for her. But for me, I was like, uh, yeah, I, I knew it. Um, and then the same thing for Rod, our co-host. You know, he ended up having to get it as well. And I told, you know, him and his wife, I was like, you got to go get tested because my brother had it severely. And, uh, well, I took him to go get his test done. And so I think a lot more people may have it than they actually realize it. And it's not always a physical part, uh, an aspect to it is sometimes it's just your brain, you know, not firing off properly. Mm -hmm. Um, so having a, a free way to kind of test this and, you know, at least put you down the right path. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, my, my wife's getting the new Apple Watch uh, because she's on a four, <laughs> Series 4, so it's uh, it's about time. It's not like she rushed into it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if she tries this out, you know, what it says. Because uh, like they were saying in the keynote, a lot of people have this and just don't even don't even think about it, don't even realize. Yeah. Uh, let, let's uh, cover briefly some of the bigger new iOS 18 features. Uh, one that will be important to Android users as well as RCS support. So you get full res image, basic reactions in your chat, chats, full res video with your Android friends. We have a group chat that has one Android user in it, and we were all celebrating by sending full res videos and hearts on the, each other's posts and everything. Uh, I, I don't know how many of those kinds of groups you're in. I know you use WhatsApp a lot anyway. Yeah, and that's one of the main reasons I use WhatsApp, aside from the general annoyance of text, is that you know I have friends with Android, and it is just a nightmare to send them stuff, you know, especially yeah, yeah. images. It's always failing and, you know, it's just really annoying. So thank goodness for that. Uh, we also got text effects. If you're in iMessage, this will only work with other people who have iOS 18. Uh, you'll get bold italics, shaking mode, uh, ripple, uh, you know, all these fun little text effects. Uh, you can schedule a text to be sent later. If you're like, Ooh, I know, I know Chris is sleeping. I'm not going to bother him <laughs> with a text message right now. Uh, more tap backs, uh, that these are not supported by RCS. So as they add the tap backs that are supported by RCS, Apple's like, Oh, but if you're an iMessage, yours will be in color. You can use emojis and all that sort of thing. Um, we also got home screen customization finally on iOS. I enjoy that quite a bit on Android, so it's nice to have it on iOS as well. You can put an app anywhere. Uh, you can change the apps to light, 
dark, or tinted. Tinted is going to choose a color based on your background, but you can customize that color. You can you can tell it with a slider, or you can do use the eyedropper on your background. Uh, you can also make apps larger. It gets rid of the label, basically, and just fills in the rest of the space. Control Center now has four pages. You can customize those, move things around on them. You can even get rid of pages. Uh, Chris, do you ever have the thing where, where your uh, flashlight goes on in, in your iPhone? Yes. By mistake? Yeah. Yes, definitely. You can just pull that off of the lock screen now. You can change both the camera and the flashlight icons on the lock screen to whatever you want. You can put it's whatever funny. you want in there now. I was on the truck and a customer was like, hey, your flashlight's on. I was like, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've had my niece tell me that uh, before, too. Like, uh, Tito, your flashlight is on. Uh, calculator conversion tool for currencies and temps. Uh, you can protect individual apps with Face ID, like your banking app. You can say, always require Face ID to open this app. And just a little nice. extra security in case somebody else is messing around with your phone. Uh, and, of course, uh, if you have upgraded your Mac to Sequoia, you can control your iPhone from Sequoia. Nice. That is all out now in iOS 18. Of course, lots of other features in iOS 18, lots of features in iPad and Apple TV and then the watch and all of that. But figured we'd give you the highlights there. Let's talk about this dating story I mentioned earlier. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, former employer of my sister, uh, analyzed data from 1960 to 2021 and found that dating apps do not make it easier to find a partner. You know, the idea with like Tumblr or not Tumblr, I guess you could get dating on Tumblr, but um, what, what am I thinking of? Um, <laughs> I don't, this is the worst conversation for Chris and I to have because neither one of us <laughs> right. dating. Uh, okay, that? Cupid. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, the idea with them is like, oh, it'll be easier to find a mate because you've got so many more options, right? You're not limited to whoever you see at the bar or happen to run across in the grocery store or whatever. However, what this data shows is that it doesn't make it easier because now you have too many options and you have too much information. And so there's now a bit of choice paralysis where you're like, okay, I'm, I've got all these choices, but it's not making the choice easier. It's making the choice harder because there's too many of them. And that outweighs the benefits of having an increased number of potential partners to choose from. Yeah. I don't know. I, I find that analysis to be odd, even though, you know, I, I, who am I to, to judge them? But it, when you have, it's not like you have, you're forced to choose one of them. Right. So I understand the paralysis. Yeah. You, you, you don't know which one to choose, but I mean, you are relatively anonymous, on, anonymous until you uh, choose one uh, in, in the end. But I, I was listening to a conversation the other day, and what I found was an interesting portion of it was they were mentioning that one of the issues they're finding with these dating apps is, uh, you know, when these, when these apps first hit the scene, they're all well and good, best intentions. But, you know, the, the people that are scammers or just, mm -hmm. you know, the serial daters or whatever you want to call them, they show up in droves in those apps with, you know, within just a short period of time. And then the same people you're trying to avoid uh, going out in real life <laughs> to meet somebody, <laughs> you're still running into them on these dating apps because what's to stop them from using it as well? And there's not yeah. really a way to do that unless you put some of this, you know, some of these apps have tried to put some of these things behind a paywall because they're like, you know, if you're out there just running game, you're not going to go pay money. To, to get back there, but you know, it could happen nonetheless. So Depends I, on the, I, uh, the profit of the game, I guess, right? Yeah. How much you have to <laughs> right. Um, but I, I, I sort of get it because, you know, let's say you're going to try to meet somebody at your church, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're pretty sure you've cut down on some, some of the risk of like going to a bar or something, but it's still like, okay, maybe there's five single people to choose from. And yeah. you go through all five and you're like, mm, none of those worked. Okay, now what do I do? The online dating app seems better, right? Because you can you can meet a whole bunch of other people. I think this makes sense to me is like, then you see all those people and you're like, well, hold on. It's like going to the grocery store and you look at all the toothpaste and you're like, I, I just want Crest. And there's like 32 <laughs> different kinds of Crest. Like I forget choosing between Crest and Colgate. Uh, so it, it causes an overwhelming amount of information. And I think what you were saying, Chris plays into that too, right? The yeah, idea of I, like, know, I, I don't, but I don't even know if I can trust these people. Yeah. I don't want to dismiss it totally. So yeah, yeah. definitely. I can, I can 
and I experience this on the food truck all the time, right? Uh, people come to the truck and it's like, oh, which side should I get? I was like, let me give you a sample of all four of the sides that I carry. And all of a sudden, uh-huh. they're still they're in a worse position than they were <laughs> when they started because they liked all four. So right, I totally right. understand that. Um, I you know I, I don't know you, you're I guess our initial thought process would be like it would be easier but I you know I do see where you know having all this extra choice would be there but the the other part about the article that was interesting was the fact that they said that it could also interfere with upward mobility because mm-hmm. you know you're finding people in a silo um, whereas, you know, if you're, you know, a multi-billionaire, you're less likely to pick somebody who's not a multi-billionaire. <laughs> yeah. I but mean, I guess if you're that. a multi-billionaire, you're probably not even on these apps, but. Right, right. Uh, you're but, but, but yeah, even, you know, you're making six figures, you're more likely because you have more information to be like, well, I'm going to narrow it down to just people with six figures of income. Right. And so that Bloomberg noted that the data indicates uh, that online dating has led to a 3% increase in income inequality because it encourages people to stay in their income brackets, basically. Wow. That, yeah. that, but, you know, it it would, be, it would also be, would be silly to, to not realize that that's already happening, you know, in the real world today, right? It's just like you mentioned, you know, if you go to a church, you've already siloed out a, a yeah, bunch of people. Yeah, that's right, in, in different ways. Um, yeah. But there, in real life, there's more of a chance that, you know, you, a rich person and a, a working class person fall in love while choosing watermelons or eggplants, or maybe not eggplants. That's going to bring up all kinds of other things, but <laughs> corn. How about corn? <laughs> Something in the grocery store. Save me, Chris. Are you saying somebody's not coming to take me shopping? <laughs> 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 but you know what I mean? Like, like you, you, you could have the meat cute in real life. You're like, less like, <laughs> right. You can just filter them out on, on these apps. And then you don't ever, you know, don't ever meet those people. No. Well, folks, if you have feedback about anything that gets brought up on the show, get in touch with DTNS's audience on our social networks at DTNS Show on X, uh, all uh, once known as Twitter. Uh, we are at DTNS Show at MSTDN.social on Mastodon. We're at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok and at DTNS Picks, DTNS PIX on Instagram and on Threads. All right, let's get to the meat of the show. Microsoft announced Copilot Pages, a new type of document you can create from Microsoft's business chat tool, a.k.a. BizChat. Pages uses Copilot to pull responses into a collaborative document from chat. And you can also not just pull in messages from each other and from the chatbot, but also information from the web and work files. Copilot pages can be shared with a link, just like a Word document, uh, to be collaborative. Rolling out to Microsoft 365 Copilot subscribers now and free to Microsoft Entra subscribers by the end of the month. Chris, it seems like this one caught your eye. Ex- explain to folks who don't know why this is compelling, why, why you think this is a pretty cool thing for business. Yeah, so... What, I thought this was super interesting. And the reason why is uh, one of the things a lot of businesses have been trying to get to is the reduction of where communication happens. So, you know, and it's really why you saw uh, apps like uh, um, uh, Teams come up. And uh, what's the other one? The, the first one that came out? Before Teams. Yeah. It's the other Slack. company. Slack. Slack, exactly, yeah. because they're they were trying to eliminate email, right? Because today the workflow, you know, or currently the workflow is, you want to have a conversation. It's back and forth in emails, and you add all these people, but then you you know you don't remember which emails had what. And so when you're trying to get these collaboration going, you got a new project coming. It's really hard to kind of find all the data. But what they've done here is they've created a launching point for things like that with this pages, and so. You can research an idea, take the results of that research, insert it in this page, and then you invite people to collaborate on the page that already has the research items. And then you can assign additional research to other members that you invited, and now all that can sit on the page. All the communication is kept within the same area, so it's not like you have to go search all these different locations for what parts of the uh, you know research project you're on. And then what I found super interesting is the fact that you say, okay, you ask Copilot to launch a new uh, a new a new project because now you have you know your your preliminary findings, mm-hmm. and it can 
literally go find a previous project, use it as the outline for the new project, and start the new project with all the yeah. deliverables, and you just start assigning people to deliverables. I, I just thought that was a, a, was a really brilliant display of how you know to use AI and automation um, in stuff that a lot of people do every day. I was tempted to compare this to Google Wave at first <laughs> uh, in that sort of like collaborative chat kind of thing. But the big difference is that, uh, and they showed this, this was one of the demos, was, you know, you're working on, a, let's say, a marketing, I think it was a marketing document for EVs in a city. Is, yep. And they you could just ask Copilot, like, how many uh, EVs exist in L.A.? And right. it would go find the information, uh, take it, and then put it into your page for you. Right. Like you didn't even have to ask it to do that. It knew, like, oh, you're. I know why you're asking. Let me let me pop that in there, and then it made a new bullet point for you. Yeah, and then the next step is where you could switch the point of information where the data is coming from to start pulling data from your internal resources, so yeah, your customer right. list and whatever research and information you have on your that helps you manage your customers and then start tying all of that stuff together. Uh, I, I, I thought that was really, really good. Um, and then so you start, you know, anybody with a product manager kind of hat on says, okay, well, that data is only good as the data that's coming into it. But, you know, later on, we'll talk about how they made it so that you can add, you know, make sure that data is coming in uh, nice and fresh. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a lot better example. We're, we're starting to see more and more of these kind of practical examples of like, yeah, it might hallucinate when you just ask it open questions as a chat bot. Even Copilot does that. Uh, but if you're constrained and you're saying, hey, we're working on a project and I want you pull from my own files, it is less likely to do that. Mm -hmm. Um you can also, Microsoft uh, lets you do co-pilot agents. They announced that at Build last last time, but you are now able to do it generally. Like if you're a subscriber, you can now make these agents. Uh, they also launched a simpler tool for building them inside Copilot Studio. You can access that from BizChat or SharePoint. Uh, and if you don't know what an agent is, it's basically an autonomous model uh, or chatbot, but you you tell it to do a specific kind of task, like monitor this inbox or see, you know, do this kind of data entry on an ongoing basis. And so for folks to understand, you know, why I think this is really cool. So think about it now. So, you know, anybody whose head is like, you know, kind of glossing over like, I, yeah, why does this matter to me? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. what this is literally doing is allowing them to remove a lot of the technical requirements for average users to consume data. So, you know, because as companies start building connectors into uh, chat GPT, the average person can go ask a question and say, hey, who's all my customers that use charge stations? Um, and then it can build you a response based on all the data and all the information it's pulling from. And that that response is a lot richer because mm -hmm. of where it's pulling the data from. And then you can go from there. So, you know, I, I've talked to a few folks that are, you know, software developers and work in the software industry still. And one of the things that is happening is customers are requesting vendors to what can you do with chat GPT and anytime mm -hmm. you start seeing customers start requesting what you can do with something that Microsoft is putting out, you better believe that thing is about to take off. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, we also got a bunch of other uh, feature announcements. Uh, Copilot in Excel now has Python support in preview. They added Python support earlier this year uh, to Excel, and now you can use Copilot with it. Uh, PowerPoint gets a brand manager and a narrative builder, so you can create a slide deck with company-approved templates and images. Uh, teams can combine information from chat and voice recordings, so all from one meeting, but you can kind of integrate those together. OneDrive will let you summarize and compare up to five files without opening them. Uh, Word will let you refer to emails and meetings alongside data from documents. That makes it bring easier to bring in attachments and stuff. And later this year, Outlook gets the ability to organize your inbox, and it can do it based on keywords you say are important. You can tell it. It doesn't have to guess. It can guess, but it can. you can tell it, like, no, these are the things that are important. And it will also get the uh, capability of summarizing messages. 
Yeah, so I'll work backwards on this one a little bit because these were all of these were actually pretty amazing to see. So starting with the Outlook one, imagine that you've had a customer you deal with an email all the time, and then you always said, "Hey, like, can we fix this issue for them? It's a priority." Chat GPT or or excuse me, Copilot, Copilot yeah. will then realize that you've said, "Hey, there's an issue for this customer that's a priority." And that will help bump that any of those emails up for that customer as a priority in your inbox. Really slick, real, uh, you know, really, really cool. Um, Word, just gathering data and trying to create a document, pulling information from emails or from wherever else because, uh, you know, Copilot has access to all this different information. Pretty solid. Uh, and then Teams, how many times have you had a meeting on Teams and then whoever is responsible for the different deliverables got dropped by the wayside. Who was responsible mm -hmm. to do this? Who's responsible to do that? Now, Copilot is doing that for, for you automatically because it's summarizing the, what was said on the meeting and can put out there, here's a summary of who, who was supposed to do what. Yeah. Again, and, it's, really, and, it, really, and having chat in there, not just the people talking, right? But right. the people kind of talking about it. All the, the chat, and yep. 100%, great point. So really, really cool. And I've been a part of all of these things where it's like, I didn't say I was going to do that. Yeah. You said, you're, you know, <laughs> I've been a part of that. So, uh, you know, the PowerPoint, not as impressive, but the, the one uh, preview that they showed was, you know, you may have a slide that needs a pretty tight image to, to kind of summarize what, the, what they're seeing. And they were able to use Copilot to find an image that would, you know, drive the message home. And it's effective, so I don't want to poo-poo it. But... You know, for me personally, because I'm the world's worst coder because I don't code and mm -hmm. probably the second world's second worst Excel user. <laughs> what they were showing the Excel was really cool. And I immediately equated to what I was doing right now. I'm not in the corporate world anymore. I run a food truck. But the idea of being able to use uh, Copilot to say, show me all my top sell food items that I'm selling, where I'm selling it, what time I'm selling it. So I know, okay, on these type of jobs where I'm going in at this time of night, I probably should carry a little bit more brisket as opposed to on these type of jobs during the day. You know, these are all things that, you know, even though that's not what they showed in the presentation, it's immediately resonated how I could use that with me. And just thinking, you know, what you guys do on your regular day to day, how if you could just oh, have yeah. a little bit more context on what you're doing when you're, you know, how much more efficient or how much more successful would you be if you could use automation and AI to kind of, you know, s square up that data for you? I, yeah. I thought that was super cool. And then writing the code for you so you don't have to write it. <laughs> what? <laughs> that just, just made your shoulders relax, didn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Tension going. Wow. <laughs> really, really cool. I, I, you know, oftentimes we like to poo-poo a lot of the corporate stuff that Microsoft does. I think they're on one here. Yeah, I really think they're on one here. Yeah, none, none of these announcements were like world breaking, you know, like, oh my gosh, look at what they did. No one's ever done that before kind of thing, but they were all useful. And I think yeah. that's more important. It's less exciting. It's less headline grabbing, uh, but it's the kind of stuff that where people use these kinds of tools are like, oh, I, I can put that to use right now. Yeah, yeah. 100%. All right, before we finish up, let's check out the mailbag. Philip writes, I wanted to share a quick thought on Notebook LM. Uh, Notebook LM is the the tool we we demonstrated last week where you can have a summary of documents like in a conversation between two people. Sounded very podcast style. Philip says, Notebook LM has the potential to be a game changer for people with disabilities, especially those who wish to podcast or communicate, but face challenges with verbal expression. My brother had cerebral palsy and many of his classmates could type to communicate, yet struggled with reading the words aloud. Notebook LM would be an incredible tool for people like them. As for DTNS... I believe replacing it with AI just isn't possible. Well, thank you, Philip. We, we like to hear that, but why? Uh, Philip says, I'm a proud member of the DTNS Patreon community, and while the valuable information provided on my daily commute is great, that's not why I support the show. I'm invested in the hosts themselves. I want to hear about their pets, their food choices, their opinions, their adventures. I'm a patron because I love the personalities. Listening to the team every day makes me smile, laugh, and turns my commute into something I look forward to. It's a daily reminder that there are truly wonderful people in the world. And well, thank you, Philip. I hope that's true. And I definitely get what he's saying about, you know, these synthesized voices aren't going to cause that kind of connection. Right. 
And we have to figure out how to get Rob a personality. But other than that, hey, oh, I love this message. He's not even here to defend himself. Chris. Come on. <laughs> There's no day offs. <laughs> uh, well, if you would like to hear Chris tease Rob directly to his face, because he definitely does, uh, where else can we find you, Chris? Oh, you most definitely can hear me and the boys over at SMR Podcast, you know, chopping it up, talking tech the way only the way we can talk tech. And then, you know, when you hear a, a new barbecue and tech episode come out, you know, I'm talking about some awesome barbecue and some awesome tech that I'm going to use to make that barbecue. Fantastic. Go check it out, folks. BBQ and tech.com. And in fact, stick around if you're a patron for Good Day Internet. Uh, Chris Ashley is going to tell us about some of his food truck tech including the terrible options for getting wireless internet hotspots. Uh, and sadly, RIP, another battery. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more about that at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back tomorrow. See you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>